In today's video, we're gonna talk about something super scary. What to do when Ableton Live breaks. You don't have to freak out, you just have to have a plan in place for how you're gonna fix it. Let me show you how. Hey everyone, I'm David from Sunday Sounds, where our focus is making software like Ableton Live fun and easy to use for worship keys players like you. If you're using Ableton Live, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell because we put out new worship keys and Ableton Live tutorials every single week. Today, we're gonna to be talking about one of the most important topics that you need to have a plan for before you get to this moment. What do I do when all my gear is connected, I show up at church and nothing is working? What if I can't get my keyboard connected to Ableton Live where I'm not hearing any audio when I'm expecting to? It's really important that you have a plan of attack and an order for how you're gonna troubleshoot this problem because it is going to happen to you. It's just the nature of setting up and tearing down a software-based keys rig. So in this video, I wanna give you a simple order that you can troubleshoot this problem to make sure that your software rig is up and running as quickly as possible. To start off with, the first thing you need to check when something isn't working in your Ableton Live keys rig is your physical connections. Make sure that all of your cables are plugged in where they need to go, that your keyboard has the right setting inside the keyboard selected, that all of your devices are powered on and connected the way that you normally would. This is the most common point of failure that we run into for folks setting up worship keys rigs regardless of software. And the reason is simple, it's just these are physical things that you're actually plugging in and unplugging week in and week out. And over time, you're gonna run into a bad cable or you're gonna overlook a cable or it's gonna get nudged out so it's not plugged in all the way. So start there with the physical connections between your hardware. Once you've made sure that all of those connections are good, then the next thing you need to do is decide or figure out whether or not you have a MIDI problem or an audio problem. And Ableton makes this super easy. First off, just make sure that in Ableton Live Preferences in the MIDI tab, that you have track or remote turned on for the devices that you need to be controlling Ableton Live with. So I have my keyboard set to track, so it's gonna pass notes and sustain data through to my MIDI tracks. Then if I needed to use something like the Nano Control 2, I would make sure that remote was turned on for that MIDI port as well. If these are turned on and you play notes, you should see this little yellow indicator in the top right corner of Ableton Live. That's how you know that track data is being received from your MIDI controller. If you see that, then you know you don't have a MIDI problem. The problem is somewhere further down the chain. Maybe a setting within your tracks, the way that you've got them programmed, or somewhere in the audio signal path. Once you know you don't have a MIDI problem, then you can start to check all of the internal programming that you've done in Ableton Live to set up your preset switching. So if you're using Chain Selector or if you're using different MIDI tracks for different instruments, just make sure everything that you've programmed is functioning the way that you designed it to be. If you're using Sunday Keys, you can check out all the documentation that came with the template to understand how it works. But simple stuff like making sure the volume is turned up, making sure that the clips are actually firing chain selector, making sure that the tracks aren't muted and that they're armed so that the MIDI data from your keyboard is actually getting passed through to the tracks. So you've got the first step of making sure that Ableton is getting MIDI data and then the second step of making sure that Ableton Live is doing what you've programmed it to do with that data. If all of that checks out, then you're further along the troubleshooting process and you can start to look at audio problems. Stuff like the master track being muted or having its volume turned down, problems with your audio interface not being selected in Ableton audio preferences, and you can start to talk to your audio engineer to make sure that you're not muted at the soundboard. If you're having a really hard time figuring out why something isn't working, one thing that I like to recommend folks do is go ahead and remove elements from the equation. So if you're using an audio interface, go ahead and select the built-in output in audio preferences and see if you can get the output through your built-in speakers on your computer. If you do, then that lets you know everything is working except that link in the chain. You can try a different cable on your audio interface or check with your audio engineer to make sure that everything is dialed in back at front of house. The last scenario I'll address here is that if you're hearing audio but it sounds bad, if it's distorted or clipping, then you can check the levels of your tracks in Ableton Live, make sure nothing is too loud. You can ask your audio engineer to make sure there's not too much gain applied 
at the soundboard, or if things sound intermittent, if you're getting crackling or popping or some weird uh, garbled character to the sound, then you can look in Ableton preferences and make sure that you're not running into CPU overload. You can increase your audio buffer size, you can make sure that your sample rate is aligned between what Ableton is using and what your audio interface is using. Simple logistics things and preference settings like that can go a long way if you're hearing stuff, but it just doesn't sound as high quality as you would like. All right, folks, did we miss anything that can really quickly help you identify why something isn't working? Leave a comment and let us know your thoughts on troubleshooting in Ableton Live. If you're new to Ableton and you need some help getting started, I'll include links in the description to some resources that will help you find the success you're looking for. Thanks for watching.